Ah, the seas are so relaxing. Such a shame I can't do this in real life without getting... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So Sea of Thieves recently had an update to their game. They added what's called Safer Seas. Now what Safer Seas is, it's an ability for players and their crews to play on their own server without the risk of having any PvP or encountering other players. Now, if you know anything about the Sea of Thieves community, you know they feel some type of way about this update. Like, take a look at all this. Personally, however, I think this is probably a slightly net positive update that came into the game. Really, what it boils down to is it allows new players to get into the game who are kind of intimidated by PvP, which overall is going to increase the player count and help the game. However, I don't think it solves the core issue that Sea of Thieves is currently experiencing. So like I am right now, Sea of Thieves is kind of in a weird spot. The community is divided up into two factions at the moment, which is the PvPers and the PvEers, and both feel really strongly that the other is responsible for the problems that the game's experiencing, and the reason why we're seeing these updates like Hourglass and now Safer Seas. However, I do think there's a third factor at play here, which is just the game loop. There's two major blaring issues with the game loop right now that, personally, I think if addressed, it would probably bring the community a little bit more together. The first major issue is there's too much downtime, and the game is severely lacking content while sailing. Sure, you have megs, skeleton ships, and krakens, and storms, and ship management, but over time, these become pretty avoidable and overall easy to manage once you understand the basic mechanics of the game. And because of this, since there's so much lacking and really nothing to do, the moment you see other players, your first instinct is to interact with them because you've been doing nothing for 30 minutes. Oh, damn! A game that we can draw inspiration from to fix this first major issue in Sea of Thieves is one of my personal favorite games, Hunt Showdown. Hunt Showdown is an extraction-based shooter where there are multiple teams traveling compound to compound, gathering clues to track a bounty. Once you locate the bounty, your job is to kill it and extract with its bounty tokens, while other players are trying to kill you and steal the bounty tokens from you. In Hunt Showdown, in between and in every compound, when you're gathering the clues, you're faced with the constant threat of PvE. This can range anywhere from a basic zombie to more mutated zombies that have specific ways to kill them. Now this not only fills the downtime and keeps players occupied, but it can also change how PvP encounters play out. Issue number two is that there aren't enough good world events that incentivize players to take risk because the rewards are lacking. The last true world event that was added was the Fort of Fortune in Season 2. Since then, there's been content additions, however they're geared more towards individual rewards with you and your crew and not server-wide rewards. Now, these have been great additions, but in doing these they've neglected what brings players together, which is a central loot area. The easiest example to point to in this situation is Fort of the Damned. Whenever a server has a Fort of the Dam active, most of the time, players are willing to engage with each other and try to steal the Fort of the Dam because the loot is worthwhile. Now we're going to circle back to Hunt Showdown. In Hunt Showdown when the bounty's been killed, the entire server is notified and it gives the map location on where the bounty has been killed. And there's a banishing period. The banishing period is a duration of time which allows other groups to go to the bounty location and PvP the group to try to steal the bounty. In doing this, players are more willing to take the risk because the reward is worthwhile. Though Sea of Thieves is not an extraction shooter, I think this mechanic could work for world events. Sea of Thieves should implement some kind of indication that players are actively doing a world event. Tying back to Hunt Showdown, when another team is taking the bounty, if you arrive to the compound where the bounty is located, the indicator will blink red. I think what makes sense here is when players get to the last wave or two, the big icon in the sky should just blink once or twice so other players can start their route there and try to intercept. Just in case they missed it blinking in the sky, 
when the world event's completed, maybe a giant Hunger Games style cannon can shoot off just to indicate to players that the event has been completed by players and it's not been despawned by reaching the time limit. Most importantly, we need more variety of world events. Two or three of them are the exact same world event where you're just mouse wanting skeletons. Honestly, that's pretty boring. Add unique dungeons, caves, the, the underwater quest where you're fighting the merfolk. That's exciting. You go into different sections of it after you complete certain waves. More variety is ultimately a good thing. Personally, I enjoy the battle for the Sea of Thieves. I enjoy the ghost ships. Another one of those wouldn't hurt if you can find a way to make it unique. But at the end of the day, there needs to be better variety in the world events to incentivize people who typically would not do a world event to do them because it makes the PvE more enjoyable for those who typically don't enjoy PvE. All in all, I think these additions could bring a lot of value to the game, while most importantly bridging the gap between the PvEers and the PvPers. If you agree with this, let me know what you think. If you disagree with it, I'd also love to hear your feedback. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.